Good day guys! Today, we shall continue the series of lecture videos for criminal law. Ang mga lecture videos na ito shall only be short, compact, and direct to the point. We shall only cover the salient topics and provisions of the revised penal code, various jurisprudence, doctrines, principles, and selected special penal laws. This lecture series can actually be used by criminology, political science, and legal management students. However, all students who are taking up criminal law and all those who want to learn about the criminal laws are very welcome here in our lecture series. For this lecture video, we shall discuss the third characteristic of criminal law and that is prospectivity. So, let us now start our discussion. Under the prospectivity principle, criminal law penalizes crimes committed on or after its effectivity. The prospective application of criminal laws is actually found in Article 21 of the Revised Penal Code as it provides that no felony shall be punishable by any penalty not prescribed by law prior to its commission. To better understand the prospectivity application of the criminal law, let me give you an example. Assuming that today, a law is passed para gawing isang krimen ang pagsiselfie. At the end of the month and following the publication requirement of a law, magiging effective na yung bagong batas against selfie. Now, prior to the effectivity of the law, pwedeng pwede pa rin mag-selfie without incurring a criminal liability dahil hindi pa naman effective ang batas. You have to remember guys that nullum krimen, nulla pena sinilege. There is no crime if there is no law punishing it. Hence, all acts of selfieing prior to the effectivity of the law shall not be punishable. On or after its effectivity, Don lang pwedeng ma-penalize ang mga mahuhuling magse-selfie. Now, it is to note that a law as a general rule shall have a prospective application so that they shall not acquire the character of an ex post facto law. However, it can also be given a retroactive application. There are three conditions wherein laws must be applied retroactively. First, when the law is favorable to the accused who is not a habitual delinquent. Second, when an act is decriminalized by a law. And third, when the law expressly provides for its retroactive application. Now, we discuss them one by one. First, a law must have a retroactive application when a law is favorable to the accused who is not habitual delinquent. Here, two requisites must be present. First, the law is favorable to the accused and second, the accused is not a habitual delinquent. Let me give you a simple example para mas maiintindihan. So, the crime of murder has reclusion perpetua as its punishment. That is, an imprisonment of at least 20 years and one day to a, to a maximum of 40 years. Assuming this year 2021, a law is passed reducing the penalty of murder from reclusion perpetua to arresto menor. Ang arresto menor is an imprisonment of 1 to 30 days. Assuming si Baby Ama was convicted of murder, say for example in January of this year, and was sentenced to an imprisonment of 40 years. He is supposed to serve his penalty up to 2061, right? So 40 years. However, because of the new law, and assuming that he is not a habitual delinquent, he can now be set free because he already has served imprisonment longer than what is required by the new law. Sumobra na dun sa 1 to 30 days. However, if he is a habitual delinquent, hindi mag apply sa kanya ang retroactive character ng bagong batas. Second, a law must have a retroactive application if it is if it decriminalizes an act. Here, ang dating krimen ay hindi na ngayon krimen. Ganun lang kasimple. If this happens, 
the principle the principle of nullum crimen nulla pena sine lege applies. If an act is decriminalized, then it is no longer punishable. For example, Republic Act 10.158 decriminalizes vagrancy under Article 202 of the Revised Penal Code because vagrants or prostitutes are victims of poverty who should be protected rather than be punished. Mahirap na nga sila at kapit sa patalim, ikukulong mo pa. To add, if an act has been decriminalized while the case is pending, the case shall be dismissed kahit na habitual delinquent pa yung accused. Third, a law must have a retroactive application if it expressly provides retroactivity. It is to note that Congress in passing a law can insert a provision of retroactivity subject to the constitutional prohibition on ex post facto law. Now, if a law expressly provides retroactivity, the court must give retroactive effect to this law kahit pa ang offender ay isang habitual delinquent. To sum it up, we should always remember that laws, as a general rule, shall have a prospective application. However, they can be applied retroactively if the following conditions are present. First, if the law is favorable to the accused who is not a habitual delinquent. Second, if a law decriminalizes an act. And third, if there is an express provision of the law providing for its retroactive application. So, this ends our discussion for the prospectivity principle of the criminal law. I am Ian Gonzalez telling you, alamin natin ang batas upang hindi tayo mamuhay ng marahas. See you again next time. Thank you and God bless.